So I just released a short 3D animation on my channel. And in this video, I'm going to give you a look into the creation of the shader that I used for the egg. Now, the shader overall isn't very complicated, but it includes several animated effects. One that I used for the shadow of the creature's embryo moving within the egg, and the other for the crack, which eventually forms along the surface. So if that sounds interesting to you, let me show you how to crack an egg in Blender. In the last video in which we painted a skin texture in Blender, I really enjoyed playing around with these subsurface scattering effects. But I wanted to find another practical application for this underutilized element of shader graphics. The concept for my animation was initially formed when my wife showed me a video by the imaginative guy of creating a homemade chicken incubator. At one point in his video, he even holds the eggs up to a flashlight to show the development of the embryo inside. This, coupled with having recently watched Jurassic Park, gave me the idea to start playing God in my favorite 3D program. The Bread Raptors. In addition, I also wanted to practice what little I've been able to retain so far from Blender Pirate's hard surface rigging tutorial and Peric Picot's effective rigging in Blender. Both these tutorials will be linked in the description below. Okay, so let's get started. So here I have my scene open, and I'm going to go to the shading workspace. Now I'm going to start going for the process of recreating the shader that I used for the egg. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new material. I'm going to call that Dino Egg. Now I'm going to start by creating the base color texture for my egg. And for this, I'm going to use two textures that I downloaded from textures.com. One is this soil beach texture, and the other is this cracked soil texture. And I'm going to take both of these textures and I'm going to mix them together with a mix RGB node set to overlay. Next, I'm going to hit Control T to create a texture coordinate and mapping node, which I can do because I have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled by default. And I'm going to plug the vector mapping node into both image textures, and I'm going to switch the texture coordinate from UV to Object. Now, if I go to both of our image textures, and I change the projection method from flat to box, it'll essentially create a triplanar projection method across our egg. This means it's projecting the image texture from all sides of the egg. Now, if you look closely, you can see that there's actually a bit of a harsh seam line where it's projecting from all sides. So we can adjust this blending value to help blur out that harsh line. I'm also going to adjust the factor a little bit on our overlay mix RGB node. Next, I'm going to process these image textures to create our roughness and normal information. So I'm going to create a RGB to black and white node and a color ramp node. Now, for the color ramp node, I'm going to plug in our image textures, and I'm just going to clamp the values slightly. And I'm going to plug the output from our color ramps into the roughness input on our shader. I'll also take our image textures, and I'll plug it into the RGB to black and white node, and then I'll plug the RGB to black and white node into a bump node. And this will give us our normal information. The RGB to black and white node will get plugged into the height input on our bump node. I'm also going to decrease the strength on the bump node to something around 0.2. 
So I'm also going to be using this beach soil texture as a displacement texture. And I'm going to give our eggs some modifiers, including a subdivision surface modifier, which will be set to 2 in the render. And I'll give it a displacement texture. And I'm going to set this displacement texture to a very low value, so something of 0 0.02. I'll leave the mid-level alone. But with both of these modifiers for both the subdivision and displacement, I'm going to disable them in the viewport. So these modifiers are going to be saved for our final render. So now that we have the base color, roughness, and normal information on our shader, we're going to go ahead and create the subsurface scattering part. Now this is where I pull back the curtains on the subsurface scattering effect because one limitation of this effect, which is meant to show light passing through an object, is that it can't actually calculate whether that light passes through an object, hits a surface within that object, and whether or not it passes through the other side. So to create the shadow of the embryo moving within the egg, I'm simply using an image texture that's being projected across the surface. Now, to find an appropriate image texture, I did a Google search for an alligator embryo, and I found an x-ray image of this little guy, who is the perfect candidate for the shadowy little figure that'll be wriggling around inside of our egg. So I'm going to import a new image texture. I'm going to select our little embryonic guy here, and I'm going to give this its own mapping node. Now, since I have the Node Wrangler add-on still enabled, I'm going to hit Control shift and click on this image texture. And this will let us preview how this image is getting projected across the surface of our model. All right, so I'm going to adjust some of the location and rotation information on our mapping. I'm also going to change the extension on our image texture from repeat to extend, which will mean there's only one instance of our image getting projected on our model. Now I'm going to insert a the ramps. I'll insert that in front of our image texture. I'm going to invert it by hitting this little down arrow and hitting flip color ramp, and I'm going to clamp this value. Now I'm going to create another texture, which is going to get mixed with our little alligator guy. And that's going to be a Voronoi texture. And I'll create a mix RGB node. I'm going to increase the scale on the Voronoi texture. And I'll give this its own mapping node. Now with the mapping nodes, I want to add a little bit more chaos to the Voronoi texture. So I am going to insert a noise texture in between the texture coordinate and the mapping. And I'm going to play with some of the values on this noise. Okay, so the shadow of our little baby creature dude is looking a little too sharp. So I want to blur that a little bit. And I'm going to be using the same blur node setup that CG Matters showed in his tutorial. I'm not going to go through how to create this. I'll link CG Matters tutorial down below in the description, but you can also just pause this video and see how I created it. Okay, now we have the texture that we're going to be using for our subsurface scattering effect. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the subsurface scattering input on our shader. And I'll give the subsurface color something of a light orange or light pink color. Now before I go ahead and preview how this looks on our shader, I'm going to go ahead and make this guy start wiggling. 
So I'm going to go to the mapping node that's plugged into our image texture, and I'm going to select the X rotation value, and I'm going to hit I to insert a keyframe. Now, if I click on this mapping node, you can see that the keyframe has just appeared in our graph editor over here. So I'm going to select that, go to our shader node tree, and you can see the values that have just been given a keyframe. So I'm going to select our X default value for rotation. I'm going to drag this panel off a little bit to make some room. And I'll hit N on the keyboard and I'm going to go to the modifiers tab, open this drop down and add a noise modifier. And it has just added a bunch of noise to our shader graph. And as you can see, if I scroll through this, it's making our little dino guy wiggle a whole bunch. But I'm going to play with the settings on this noise modifier. Now I'm going to copy this noise modifier by hitting this little icon up here for copy modifiers. And then I'm gonna go to our Z default rotation value and I'm going to paste the same modifier onto our Z rotation value. But I'm going to adjust these settings. Okay, now that our little dino dude has the appropriate amount of wiggle room, we'll go ahead and plug this into our shader to see what it looks like. Now, as you can see, the subsurface scattering effects are pretty much only visible in the rendered viewport when we're looking at the complete lighting setup. And if we scrub through our graph, we can see the wiggle effect. Good, now we're gonna move on to creating the crack, which is going to form across the surface of our egg. And this is going to be done completely procedurally within Blender. So I am going to start with a gradient texture. I'm going to set this gradient texture to spherical, and I'll give this texture its own mapping node. I'll also hit Control Shift and we'll preview what we're working on. I'm also going to copy over a second instance of the blur node setup that we created over here. Now I'm going to insert a color ramp node in front of our gradient texture. And by holding down control and clicking in this gradient on the color ramps node, I'm going to insert a new color handle. Now I'm going to switch this color handle to a total black value. And I'm going to switch the black value here to a white value. Now I'm going to take both white color handles and I'm going to clamp them in on the black one in the middle. And I'm going to switch it from linear to ease. I'm going to greatly reduce the amount of noise that's being used to blur our texture. And now I'll play with the values on the mapping node to move our crack into place. So there we have it, the crack that's going to form in our egg. But how do we get it to appear? I don't want this crack to just suddenly appear on the egg. I want it to fracture in separate sections as the crack spreads across the surface. So I'm going to create another gradient texture. I'm going to switch this one to linear, and I'll give it its own mapping node. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis. Now you can see that the gradient is going from the top to the bottom of the egg. Now I'm going to insert another color ramps node in front of this gradient. 
And by holding down control, I'm going to create several little color step values across this gradient. And I'm going to switch it from linear to constant. So that each value is constant until it gets to the next little color handle. Next, I'll create a MixRGB node. I'll plug our crack into the first color input on the mix RGB node. And I'll plug our second gradient, which has these color stepped values, into the factor input. I'll set the second color input to be bright white. Next, I'll insert our math node in between our stepped color ramps and our mix RGB node. And I'm going to set the math operation to greater than. And I'm going to set the threshold value at negative 2. And now if we preview what this looks like, we can see that the crack will only appear when the value is greater than the threshold we have set. And now we can animate our threshold value by inserting a keyframe starting with the negative value of negative 2, going ahead on our graph, and then setting it to a positive value. I'll put in positive 2. Then pressing I to insert another keyframe. Now the crack will only appear in segments as it fractures across the surface of our egg. And that's essentially it. From here, it's just a process of mixing the crack with our base color, roughness, normal, and subsurface texture. For the base color, I give the crack a bit of a purple tint and then multiply it onto our base color texture. For the subsurface, I multiply it onto the current subsurface texture so that light is not shining through the crack as it forms. And from there, I simply incorporate the crack into the normal and roughness texture, simply using some mix RGB and color ramps nodes. And that's how you crack an egg in Blender. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. So until next time, good luck getting those projects done, and I'll see you in the next video.